The Leap Foundation proudly presents the Meet the Mentor podcast with Dr. Bill Dorfman. Dr. Bill is a TV host, New York Times bestselling author, two-time Guinness World Book record holder, fitness guru, celebrity cosmetic dentist, and philanthropist who founded the Leap Foundation. Here's Dr. Bill. Hey, Dr. Bill here. So you're probably wondering why I have this on and not a shirt. I'll tell you why. Dr. Bill is having shoulder problems and it's not fun. It took me about 10 minutes to get this shirt on because I can't lift my arm and I'm sitting here going, ah, I'm just gonna leave it on for this. Um, we're going to do another Meet the Mentor today with somebody who is absolutely one of my favorites. She's been a big, big, big hit at Leap. I'll tell you a little bit about her. Why do we do these? Well, every year we do Leap. And it is a one-week motivational leadership program that we do at UCLA. Now, until coronavirus, it was always live. In 2020, we did LEAP as a virtual program, and it was awesome. Last year, this summer, we did it as a hybrid. We had 50 students live and about 500 virtual. Hopefully, in 2022, it's going to be all live. Well, we'll be back to the 500 live, and then we'll also always continue a virtual program. But this, uh, this coronavirus has really thrown a wrench into the world, isn't it? Um, anyhow, it gives me great pleasure to introduce you to Niha Gupta. She is a teen expert who works in helping teens find their passion, achieve success academically, and get into their dream schools. She is a TEDx speaker and has been on Good Morning LA, NBC, and CBS, and was one of the most popular speakers at LEAP 2019, 2020, and 2021. If you are a high schooler, she is the person you need to connect with because she is the founder of College Shortcuts, a college admissions agency that has helped 95% of the students get into the dream school that they wanted to get into. Nia, thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. So tell me what you actually do. Like, how do you help these students get into the schools they want to get into? We do a lot of things here at College Shortcuts. I think one of the biggest issues we're seeing year after year, and especially after this last year, is that students were not um, as required to have a lot of social interaction last year. And so one of the biggest things that we do at College Shortcuts is we help students to package themselves properly so that when an admissions officer is looking at their application for five to seven minutes, they know exactly who that student is, why they wanna go there, and how they're going to help that community grow. And that is something that our high schools currently are not teaching our children of how to pitch themselves, how to sell, and what really matters when it comes to the interview resume and essays. So basically you're helping students prepare their college entrance essays and everything that they need to kind of make their package. Yes, and that's specifically with their applications. With our families that start and students that start as early as 8th, 9th, and 10th, and 11th grade, we're working on building their resume by finding capstone projects with them to really explore what are they interested in and, and experiential learning. Um, you know, our school systems are focused in on a lot of subjects, but for example, let's say someone wants to possibly go into dentistry and they don't know why or how. Well, we come up with a project that helps them to go experience or understand a little more in depth what that is and then decide that's for me or that's not for me. And we want to do that early on because we know that 80% of Americans don't like their jobs. And we are trying to combat that by helping kids early on to find out what they love to do. You know, and things have changed a lot in your field. Like I heard they don't even take your SATs anymore. My gosh, in the last year, I don't know how parents are doing this on their own. We actually grew by over 60% last year, just and that's a lot to say for most companies during that time. Um, but it's because it's so confusing. So last year, even Harvard and all top schools canceled the SAT, ACT requirements because no one could take a test. We're still seeing a little bit of that still this year because most people, especially in the California area, are really struggling. They're driving four hours out, 
staying in a hotel the night before to be able to send their kid to an exam. So a lot of people have thrown that requirement out, especially the UC schools. Second thing is College Board canceled permanently the SAT two subject tests, which used to be uh, a requirement for high level colleges. So that's another big change. Common App changed its essay prompts in relation to, you know, what is something that you're grateful for and why. So we're seeing a lot of different changes um, from grades being passed fail from last year to SAT scores to what they're looking for when it comes to authentic authenticity, grit, and resilience in the application. So yes, it has been completely flipped upside down in the last year. So if you're going to work with a student and help them get into, say, the college of their dreams, ideally, you want to start working with them in what, seventh, eighth grade? Honestly, as early as possible. And that's not because we want them to be just like, I want to go to XYZ school at that age. We actually want them to be able to experience a lot of different projects and different things throughout their career academically. Um, because again, academics and scores are like 40 to 50% of that equation. The other part of the equation that we find is the most important is trying different things out and either loving it or failing at it. And I have, I've added this part of failing at it a lot this year and in the last few years, because you can learn just as much from failing at something or saying, I don't want to do that as much as you learn from knowing that you do want to do that. So most of our families, if they start with us as early as ninth grade, we're able to teach them things. And a lot of things that we both overlap on is around like self-care, time management, leadership, communication. Bill, you and I both know that these are the skills of true success um, outside of just making a 1600 or a 35 on these entrance exams. That's where real success lies is, do you have the ability to speak eloquently, stand out, and have a passion that makes it very clear. So we like to start earlier because it does take time to develop that while you're growing up. It's not just something you get in a few months. So, so kind of walk me through the process. Let's say, you know, in, in an ideal situation, and then I'm going to have you do it like if, if, you know, if all you can do is say, look, you know, I'm, I'm a 12th grader and I'm applying to college, you know, what do you do? So let's do the ideal and then let's do the the Hail Mary one too. Great. So in an ideal situation, you start with these students at what? Eighth grade, eighth ninth, or ninth grade? Eighth or ninth grade, depending on the student. And uh, what eighth, would you actually be doing with them? Yeah, so we offer um, two specific things. One is mentorship, where we teach them the power of self-care, time management, um, creativity and ideation, as well as leadership and communication. And we break that into four quarters. And we work with the student one-on-one -on -one coaching every two weeks we meet to teach them these skills. We check in with the parents every quarter to talk about, you know, hey, this is what we've covered. Have you seen any differences, any reflections you want to make? So mentorship is really big because number one, we're seeing that the highest population of suicide, stress, anxiety, and depression is in teenagers. So we found that our mentorship program helps to combat that. The second aspect that we do is we do capstone projects in the fall, the spring, and the summer. And these are 10 week programs where we stick a group of kids together. They each work on a project and then they present at the end and they get a letter of recommendation at the end. Those projects can be done eighth, ninth, 10th, 11th, and then up until 12th grade because they're still learning a lot about themselves. They're exploring a project. They could continue that project year after year. For example, we have kids that are building apps, building businesses, becoming TEDx speakers. We have some students that have written a 300 page book. Um, you know, doing a lot of different things, or they shadow um, a professional. And so there's a lot of different projects that they do. Now, I've been getting a lot of calls from families that are 12th graders that are like, hey, um, we saw applications open, and we need to get uh, application help. Um, the only way for us to work with that family, and we interview every family we work with, is to ensure that they have a very strong resume already built. Um, they have a clear direction about where they want to go or what they want to do. And if they need a little bit of help around that, we absolutely can help. Um, and then we are in what we call crunch time working on those applications and essays all the way up until November, December deadlines. All right, makes sense. All right, so here's the $24,000 question. I love what you do. It's yeah. amazing. Now, if I were a student and I wanted to actually have a career doing what you do, how would I prepare myself for that? 
You know, it's interesting you ask that. So when people find out the way I got into this or what I started doing, it's, it's interesting. I actually started really at the age of 15. Um, so I was a teenager when I technically started my company. I just didn't realize I was starting at that age. Um, the first iteration of what this was, was me actually tutoring kids. Um, I was the top hip hop dancer at my high school and I started tutoring in dance. I also volunteered at a school across the street from my top school that was an underprivileged school and I was tutoring math and Spanish. So I was able to get my feet wet in a way with working with students one on one. I then put an ad out. I know this is dating me a little bit. I put an ad out when I was in college about, um, hi, is anyone looking for a tutor? Um, you know, please email me. And I had this like random email, hotmail email address and parents would email and say, wow, I would love a person from your, from where I went to college, which was rice to tutor our, my kid. And of course, just being someone who understood packaging at an early uh, point in life, like I would show up in a suit for my interview and I'd have a printed resume that was on beautiful paper. And the parents would be like, I've never seen a college kid walk in, look this young and this prepared. And I would get every single job that I ever wanted to get. And I realized that that was something that I was really good at. Like that was my superpower in a way. So I tutored these kids. My first kid was Laura. She was in second grade. She's now like practically double my height <laughs> and she's 22 and she's graduated college. So I've been doing this for a really long time where I tutored kids. So they really become my kids in the end over time. And then it started happening where all my kids got older and they started needing help with college applications and essays. So I started off tutoring. I tutored in about a thousand homes in the Houston area um, to the point where some of the houses I'd been in twice because families had moved. And I was like, wait, I've been to this address. So I had become very well known for what I did. And moms just spread the word really quickly. So then I found other people to join my team. I grew it. And then I found that where people needed a lot of help in the end was how to package yourself and how to do the essays. And we kept seeing we were getting kids in year after year after year to hard schools, UT business honors, um, lots of different programs. And so then I said, OK, now let's do this as college shortcuts. So I'd say that for any student that's like looking to get started, the way I really looked at it is think about what are things you enjoy doing that you're shocked that you would actually get paid for. I was shocked I got paid for tutoring. I mean, I, I couldn't believe it. For me, it was so much fun that you could have actually just, I would have done it for free because I liked it so much. And so I think that's a really important like barometer of like, where do you lose track of time in a way? Um, and I know I'm the queen of time management, but you know, where do you lose track of time that you really enjoy it? You know, I'm sure Bill early on in your career, when you were doing a lot of dentistry work and all of that, like you came up with innovative services and solutions, because that's just how our brains work when we're just in flow state. So that is how I got into it. Um, my degree is actually in economics and business. It is not an education. So, you know, it doesn't mean that if you're a different college degree that you can't get into this. I will say that one of the skills that is very important is understanding entrepreneurialism and business. Um, if you are going to open up your own company, that is a major aspect of it. And then the other aspect is getting the skill of understanding how to do education. Wow, it's a lot. So mm -hmm. tell me about your business. Uh, how many employees do you have? So we've got over 50 consultants. And then I also have my executive team, which is they're, a, they're, like, they're like the Tom Brady's of <laughs> college consulting. So I've got this amazing team um, that is behind me and doing incredible work. And we're working together on amazing projects. Um, so I would say our team is probably about 55 to 60 total at this point. Um, and we're continuing to grow. Last year was one of our biggest years in growth because of no one being able to visit colleges, not knowing what to do, all the rules changing. Um, and we're seeing that year after year. Um, just in this month, it, of back to school, we've already had an 80% growth from last year's back to school. Um, so we are, we are staying very busy here at College Shortcuts. Um, but we're also seeing why, um, you know, a lot of students are suffering from like panic attacks, extreme stress for taking a test. Um, they're really unsure what they want to do because they didn't get to do internships. They weren't able to explore things. So there is definitely a need to find alternative solutions. And that's why 
uh, we've grown so much, which has been really great for the company, but also um, for our coaches to really mentor these kids. Where are you based out of? So I'm based out of Houston, Texas. Uh, due to the pandemic, I moved back closer to my mom. Um, so I'm based out of Houston, but our, we get calls from all over the US, England, India, um, and around the world, Canada as well. So, uh, you know, one of the interesting things is, you know, earlier on, people would say, no, I want a college consultant in person for my kid. Today, they're like, please don't come to my house. So, so the virtual thing is no longer an objection for parents. They're like, oh, this is perfect. I can hire the best of the best from anywhere, jump on Zoom, and my, my kid is taken care of. So, yeah. That's awesome. And what's the best way for people to find you? Best way to find us is actually at collegeshortcuts.com. Uh, we offer a free scheduled call uh, for any family that is interested in working with us. In the top right corner, there's an apply button right there. Um, if you're interested in getting a lot of free resources and information and tips, I highly recommend my Facebook page, College Shortcuts. We also have a Facebook group called Parents of High School Students um, for parents as well. And then we're also on Instagram um, as well and YouTube, lots of videos on YouTube. So lots of different ways to find us and learn more about how we do what we do, why we do what we do and how to get into this as well. I can't thank you enough. I know what you do is amazing. My students who have worked with you love you. You always get like the highest ratings that leave. And um, if you are a parent watching this and you want to help your student get into the college of their dreams, please call and call it shortcuts and they will help you get on the right track. And the earlier you do it, the better, right? Absolutely. All right. Hey, thank you so much. I look forward to hopefully seeing you live at LEAP yes. 2022. Uh, Dr. Bill, over and out. Thank you. To learn more about the LEAP Foundation, go to leapfoundation.com or find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash leapfoundation or on Instagram at LEAP Foundation. Listen to the Meet the Mentor podcast with Dr. Bill Dorfman on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast.